First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the Venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to the 16 Dharma King Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupton Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa, Ekajati Asuma. Sumu, Tutan Sipi Rinpoche, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, and temple directors, disciples present here and over the internet. From the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Secretary General Daniel Liao and Madam Liao, Dharma Sister Judy, the Chief Secretary of the Taiwan Government, Mr. and Mrs. Zheng Peifu, the Council Person from Tainan City, Mr. Tsai Wang Chun, the Scholars Group of Tourism School, the Distinguished Professor Wang Jingxian, Professor Wang Yao Jun, Professor Wang Li, Professor Tsai Bo Yi, Professor Gu Hao Xiang, Professor Hong Xin Yi, Professor Ye Su Wen, Professor Lin Xiu Ji, Professor Si Jia Ming, Dr. Yu Jiang Cheng, Dr. Liang Cao Huan, and Medical Dr. Lin Jun An. Attorney Shi Le Zhuge Foundation, Mr. Luo and Ms. Huang, and the President of the Worldwide Lotus Light Charitable Society, Master Chang Ren, President of the Lotus Light Charitable Society of Taiwan, Mr. Li Chunyang, from Qing Yi Enterprise General Manager, Ms. Zhang Yijing, Representative to the Legislator Cai Xi Chang, Ms. Chen Huimin. Representative to the Council Person of Kaohsiung City. Producers for the nine stages of the Great Perfection Dharma Hevajo Exposition and development stages of Tantrayana, Master Lian Yu. Producers for the King Tian Zhang Xinten from CTITV Taiwan, Dharma Sister Rebecca Xu Yaqi. And we thank you to
to Bazo chapter of Taiwan for their donation of two hundred thousand anti dollars and Dharma Sister Liu Yiping one hundred thousand and the uh, Lotus Light of Society of Hong Kong also one hundred thousand anti dollars. Oh, I also saw my ex-classmate, Mr. and Mrs. Zhu Jinsui. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? We perform Ekajati Asoma Homa. I there is a special uh, broadcast for my interview for the Chinese New Year. Uh, the, the time of the television broadcast and the publications in the for Izokan, the weekly magazine. It's the edition, February 12th division, edition. Chi Pai uh, Edition 726. And on March 12th, and also the same magazine, number 720. And also 727 on March 27th. And the Apple newspaper would be published on February 12th, February 17th, and March 6th, and March 9th, and April 24th and May 2nd. That would be pink water about the Apple magazine, I mean newspaper. And for the Chinese New Year's programs, would be broadcasted on CH channel, or oh, channel 36, on February 21st, which is the third day of the Chinese New Year, on Saturday. Zhongtian Channel from 10 to 11 a.m. 10 to 11 a.m. And on February 22nd, Sunday, uh, the third of the Chinese New Year on Saturday and the fourth is on Sunday. 10 to 11, channel 36. That's the dates for the publications of my interview. Why do we need to get on the media, whether it's uh, televisions or the uh, paper, medias, magazines and newspapers. As we know, 
the worldwide president of Lotus Light Charitable Society is Master Chang Lin. And he is the leader of the Si Fang chapter or a spiritual center, the Ten Directions in Jianqin Sachi. It's the most expensive area in Hong Kong. And the Buddhist statues at that uh, chapter is truly beautiful. If you have a chance to visit his chapter, you would praise because they are really, truly beautiful. So the Golden Mother that I saw last week was uh, really beautiful. An 18-year-old Golden Mother was uh, led by Master Chang Ren to have it sculpted. And today I heard that it would cost six million NT dollars. When I heard that, I stuck my tongue hang out of my mouth and I couldn't retract it. Six million NT dollars for one statue. And then he replied, don't worry, it is offered by this uh, Shi Fang Ten Direction <laughs> chapter in Hong Kong. It's being offered by, so it's not going to be covered by Taiwan Lizang Temple, but instead uh, by the the chapter that was that is led by Master Chang Ren, Shi Fang chapter, Ten Direction chapter, and the Lotus Light Charitable Society, six million NT dollars. How could it be so expensive? And he said, her crown, oh, there, there would be real diamonds on her on Golden Mother's crown. I shouldn't have said this. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be stolen. They would be stolen. But I have said it. So real diamonds on her crown. And I thought, how come the Hong Kong Lotus Light Charitable Society is really prospering, is really doing really well? And Master Chang Ren told me that at the Hong Kong uh, uh, TV programs, which is Drops of Water is Life, is being broadcasted on the Hong Kong stations. And it's being propagated around the world, as told by Master Chang Lin. So if you don't sell, then uh, you would uh, definitely go bankrupt. So by having such a big ad, and there's this um, philanthropic work to attract people to perform charity together, so there are many celebrities in Hong Kong that participate and make donations. So there are many Hong Kong celebrities that join this effort. So Master Chang Ren, could you please uh, say a few words about uh, how many celebrities getting involved? This, the microphone of Taiwan Weichang Temple is like this.
The great master and all masters and guests and participants, how do you do? The Lotus Light Charitable Society of Hong Kong, under the blessings of Grand Master, uh, there are about 20 celebrities who join our efforts in Hong Kong. In our charity work, they attended our events and uh, they, they just volunteered uh, their time and without accepting any fees from us. And in our charity work, they would really move. And, and then they also provide donation, not only their time, but also money. So Master Chang Ren has said that on the television stations, there's uh, ads to entice people to join this uh, charity work and there's uh, donation information. And he said, uh, and all the marketing and advertising fees are covered uh, by the donations. So we don't only sell and market Lotus Light Charitable Society, and you also accept more donations and more participations by people not only uh, from Jupiter School but also from outside the school. So I hope the Taiwan Lijang Temple, the Taiwan Lotus Light Charitable Society can also reach out. We need to reach out and we need to make ourselves known. And if you perform charity and behind closed doors, you know, I heard last Sunday there were 1,000 lotus light little an angels um, ha having lots of performances and competitions at the, at the field here, at the temple. And there were many school principals and participants. However, there is none in the news nothing, nothing mentioned at all. That was organized by Taiwan Lejang Temple, and it was a major charity event, also held by Lotus Light Chapel Society, but nobody, nobody reported it, not even one word. And I checked the internet, there were very few it's mostly on the school websites, the school that are the benefactors of this event. But how about the website of Taiwan Lejang Temple? No. How about the website of Lotus Charitable Society of Taiwan? No. Now it's no news anymore. It's already a week. It's not on the websites of our schools, or Taiwan Lejang Temple, or Lotus Light Charitable Society. So, so you're dead if you don't uh, make yourself known. Like what my guru said, so there are many government officials, recently a county mayor, 
ex-vice president, uh, legislator, council person, and they met me, and I give, we exchanged business cards or name, name cards and said, oh, your Taiwan Lichang Temple, and they asked, oh, where is Taiwan Lichang Temple? They don't even know where Taiwan Lichang Temple is. And this is the biggest station of True Buddha School. And we have to reach out so that everybody know the Taiwan Lichang Temple of True Buddha School. You cannot just uh, hide behind the doors. You do public work, but behind the doors. So we spread Buddha Dharma quietly. Only two Buddha school disciples know, but the outside people don't. Maybe only very few, but most people don't know. But if you ask Ji Foundation, where's the head uh, office? They they all know. Every single person know. And also Fo Guang, Fo Guang San, where Kaohsiung, everyone knows. But if you ask Taiwan Lichang Temple of True Buddha School, nobody knows. I don't know. So if you don't market yourself, you would be bankrupt. So when you market yourself, you can also accept donation at the same time as you're performing public work. If they appreciate your work, then they, they don't know where to donate. So Lotus Light Charitable Society should uh, reach all corners of the world. This is uh, everyone's Lotus Light Charitable Society. So Hong Kong, they, they did really well. They do really well. And also the Ten Directions chapter do really well. They do really well. They could donate six million MD dollars to sculpt a very beautiful young golden mother. And he agreed right away. No big deal. And also the uh, true Buddha Seattle chapter uh, of Rainbow Temple in Seattle, all the statues and shrine there that's really beautiful and colorful, they were all donated uh, through Master Chang Ren also. So all the statues were donated by Lotus Light Charitable Society and Ten Direction Chapter. So where did they get all the money? Is by marketing and accepting donation, making it known to people because people are willing to make donations, they just don't know where or how. So Taiwan Nichang Temple cannot just stick to ourselves. So Taiwan Lotus Light Charitable Society uh, should not just close our doors and perform public works uh, quietly. Yeah. You, we do some uh, charity and public work, but we never publicize it. See, in news, nothing. On the websites, nothing. And even the Lotus Light Charitable Society itself don't publish it at all, not even on your website. But the participants, the, the schools, 
they have a, a short news about it on their websites. So this propagation is not enough. There's no power here in our publication. So our PR director, Fermi Wong, is here. He's partly responsible for this. So you need to you need uh, to do more. You need to create a good clips and publicize it. And the kind of work, the kind of charity that we have done, we need to make it known. So you know, with uh, with the expenses, we all would also have income. And you would succeed if people know, move, and willing to participate or donate. So from the worldwide president, Master Chang Lin, the Lotus Light Charitable Society and in Hong Kong, and in comparison to the Lotus Light Charitable Society of Taiwan, is something that we need to learn. So I have talked for over 30 minutes already. So just one word. If you don't sell, you would uh, go dead. In today's world, you cannot just do things quietly. So the mudra of Asung Ma is like this. Ekajati. Her look is, she has one hair knot, or one head bump, one eye, one mouth, with one tooth, and one breast. One breast. Why? They're only one, because she's number one. She is an um, emanation of the Adi Buddha, Samantabhadra Tathagata. So Ekajati is only one. So one eye means one wisdom. And this wisdom is the wisdom of the Buddha, wisdom of the Tathagata. And one breast Of course, we have never seen those with three breasts or one breast. So one breast means oh, encompassing all kinds of uh, work, including purification, blessing, magnetization, and subjugation. So in principle, the greatest Buddha mother as spoken before in the Prajna Paramita vehicle, the Prajna Buddha Mother, Paraparamita, is the highest Buddha Mother. Prajna Paramita is the highest Buddha Mother in Mahayana tradition. In Tantrayana tradition, the highest Buddha Mother is Ekajati the consort of Adi Buddha, Om Asongma Hongde, so Asongma or Ekajati. She is the highest, and Prajna Paramita is also the highest, and Guru Guli Buddha Mother is also the highest. They are all great Buddha Mothers, and also Sentongma, Singamuka, the lion-faced Dakini. They are all great Buddha Mothers. In Tantric Buddhism, Asongma or Ekajati and Gurukule and Rahula are the three 
great uh, protectors in Ningma Ba. And Om Asoma Hombe is the highest protector with the most Dhamma power. So this deity is the Yidam of the Venerable Mang Liaoming, Asoma Ekajati. So her Dharma power is extremely great if your primary supplicant is very fortunate. So any Dakini practice that you would do, like Green Tara, White Tara, the 21 Taras, you would receive blessings from if you receive blessings from Ekajati, it would be really easy to gain spiritual or yogic response with any Tara practice. One eye, meaning one wisdom. So we have a chapter called the One Wisdom Chapter with one eye. That's the wisdom of the Tathagata. Very precious. Her Dharma power is boundless. And she bestowed purifications, enrichments, magnetization, and subjugation. And her wisdom is the wisdom of the Padakata. And her great radiance shine upon all the world. So receiving Ekajati's empowerment and being the primary supplicant, you would receive great blessings and great Dharma power. And her sit syllable is a red rung, red rung. And primarily is for subjugation and not for subduing others, but you need to subjugate yourself first. You subjugate your own arrogance and pride, and you subjugate your own weaknesses, shortcomings, and you subjugate greed, anger, delusion, doubt, and pride. And she embodies the utmost and first and foremost purity. This is very important. Today, let's talk on the Great Perfection Dharma. Guru Padmasambhava said, when he was bestowing the empowerment, his finger was emitting all kinds of electricity, which is the empowerment of the 18 divisions of Great Perfection Dharma. When he was emitting the light, the small body of Sang Yen Lu was divided into even tinier bodies. In this way, innumerable empowerments were bestowed into innumerable bodies. This is how the empowerments were accomplished. I had this impression that when he was emitting the lights, I absorbed it through my skin pores. So each of my skin pore receives the empowerment of the Great Perfection Dharma. It is a complete, it was a complete empowerment. The 18 major divisions of Great Perfection Dharma only exist within Ningmapa's great masters, and in this world there are others who comprehend this Dharma. This is the highest secret Dharma of Guru Padmasambhava, the second Buddha from Udhyana. Now Guru Padmasambhava transmitted to the one and only 
highly secretive dharma and its pith instructions to Sangyendu and instructed him to, dis to widely disseminate it. Immediately and uniquely I received the empowerment of the 18 divisions of Great Perfection Dharma and Guru Padmasama bestowed all the empowerments upon me and carefully instructed me. It really moved me. This is truly great fortune for the world and I was deeply touched. So the, the heart essence of this teaching is also the heart essence of Vairokana Buddha. Who is the Guru of Guru Padmasambhava? Guru Padmasambhava had the Guru Sri Singha. The first Pema Niktik, heart essence or the Niktik was Vairochana. He also had the same Guru, Sri Singha, who taught him great perfection Dharma. That's why it was called the Pema Niktik. Second is Lama Niktik, the one that was sent to learn great perfection Dharma. There were five of them, four or five of them who went to Sri Simha to learn, to study. Check, quickly. The six great masters of that time, and they together, they assembly their teachings, into Lama Niktik, five or six of them. And third is Dakini Niktik. What is the Dakini Niktik? Is what Guru Padmasambha learned from Sri Simha. That's called Dakini Niktik. And the fourth is the most profound Niktik. And it is the most important queen essence of the heart essence. So there are four different kinds of heart essence or niktiks. Guru Padmasambhava said these four niktiks permeate all 18 divisions of Great Perfection Dharma. And the exposition of the four niktik could only be obtained after opening the treasure coves. The hidden treasure that was hidden by Guru Padmasambhava and his consort, the king of the wisdom ocean upon their union, in the treasure troves of the five elements of earth, water, fire, wind, and space, waiting for the destined ones to discover them. In Tibet, the legend said that there was a guru called the uncontaminated light master who is that Long Jingba. And the white lotus king learned the uncontaminated light discussion and they're all about the heart essence of Kala Chakra, not Great Perfection Dharma. So the White Lotus King is the second king of Shambhala, also studied the uncontaminated clear light radiance scripture about Kala Chakra. So in Tibet, in the cave of Samya Chinbu, 
he obtained the four nictic and practice and attained Siddha. So that was Guru Padma Sambhava, Ishichoka, and also the 25 great disciples. So Samye Chimpu is the cultivation place of Guru Padma Sambhava, his consort Ishichoka, and the 25 great disciples. And in my Vajra Samaya meditation, I was brought by Guru Padma Sambhava to the Golden Pagoda Cavern in Tibet and bestowed direct transmission. I was so blessed and this was truly special that never occurred before. Guru Padma Sambhava instructed that the Tibetan word Cheche means pure emptiness and the Tibetan word Tok means performing with control or going along with great mastery. This is like in the Hat Sutra that form is none other than emptiness and emptiness is none other than form. That emptiness, <coughs> that is, emptiness is none other than appearance and appearance is none other than emptiness. That appearance is emptiness and emptiness is appearance. Guru Padma Sambhava expounded in great details on this topic and I'm really clear about this. So what is Cheche, that is emptiness, and what is Chok, that is performing with control. So Cheche is emptiness and Chok is learning or performing with control. If you understand this, then that would be enlightenment. So today, the most important part is in Chachi and talk. And Ren Yun. If you want to gain enlightenment, let me ask you two questions. What is emptiness and what is existence? If you can be enlightened to this, then you are enlightened. What is emptiness and what is existence? And let me tell you that emptiness is existence and existence is emptiness. So that's what's in the Heart Sutra. That form is no other than emptiness, emptiness no other than form. The first few words of the Heart Sutra, and at the end you gain nothing. So I asked everyone, and everyone wrote about the enlightenment. Then they shoot the arrow. And someone said, even the arrow doesn't exist, that's why I don't need to shoot. Don't need to gain enlightenment, no need for anything. And let me tell you, that's right. But what is existence and what is emptiness? Then, but he couldn't explain, he couldn't provide the answer. At the enlightenment, at the end, is no enlightenment. Enlightenment is no enlightenment. This, this is correct. But you need to tell me why. If you can explain, then I would know whether you really gain enlightenment or not. It's simple. Think about it. Let me share jokes. There's a 
someone was on the train and uh, meeting an Indian and the Indian can speak Chinese so the Chinese asked the Indian can you use Chinese chopsticks and the Indian replied eating using hands are the, the most the, the, the most proper way and you can catch anything you can and the Chinese uh, disagree and took the Indian to eat uh, the Chinese hot pot because the Indian said uh, you can eat anything with hands but the Chinese um, how could you eat the hot pot that's on flame uh, there's a Buddhist concept in here if you catch with your hands you can catch anything almost anything Catching with your hands, that's the same as emptiness, but the chopsticks are existence. And sometimes you need to use existence. This is talk, which is going along with mastery. Although it is empty, which is catching with hands, or taking with hands, or using chopsticks, that's so emptiness and existence are the same. So think about it, emptiness and existence. Someone went to the flor florist, the flower shop, or uh, the nursery, and I bought mimosa plant. And when I touch it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't close their leaves. So is it really a mimosa? And so maybe it's a shameless mimosa. There's a philosoph philosophy here. What is it that's being closed and what is it that's open? If you if you grasp if you're attached to being close, then you're just like ordinary people. If you are attached to being open, then there would be emptiness. But if you can be close and open, then that would be natural. So there's a reason in here. So even in these jokes, one day the United Nations was having a conference and all the representatives have to say a few words and the Japanese raised the hand first and spoke something and, and the leader asked, can you speak in English? And the Japanese replied, I am speaking in English. And the Japanese continued. And the leader asked, uh, uh, can you stand up when you talk? And the Japanese replied, I am standing. Talking about Japanese speaking English. So, 
the Seattle, American Seattle would become American Seattle. So Seattle is Seattle. So when the Japanese speaks English, it sounds like Japanese. I asked someone, uh, what is uh, cool in Japanese? Handsome in Japanese. So it's adopted from English, so it would be handsome Dale. The same word. So handsome becomes handsome deal. So Japanese speaking English, you need to understand Japanese to understand it. So even Japanese are also human beings. We call it the little Japan. There was a foreign minister that said that Japan is like a dog's droopings all the way from uh, Honshu, from the... And Taiwan is like yam. And Singapore is like the nose dropping. This was spoken by a foreign minister, not by me. Because Japanese Japan calls itself the great Japan uh, kingdom. And in the past, the Japanese are also uh, tiny, short. So there is a difference between tall and short. And in Great Perfection Dharma, there is no difference. Why? Because the short people have greater wisdom. <laughs> and Master Hui Chun would be happiest. And Master Li Yi would be happiest. Because, because I often call them the hobbits. I am a slightly bigger hobbit. <laughs> and Hui Jun is the the fat one and Lian Yi is the skinny one. Uh, they are very short, but their brains are really huge, well developed. <laughs> they are, it's not that, they have lots of stuff in their brains. Don't undermine Hui Jun. She has lots of stuff in her brain, <laughs> including lots of worms. Quality. Don't ridicule the short people. <laughs> if you're tall, <laughs> you're an easier target. Boom. Why? The Vietnamese won in the Vietnam War because they are small, tiny, and they hide easily. They dig a little hole and Americans cannot get into. You know, the hole is as big as this book. You know, the opening of the, of the cave, although the cave is huge underneath. So the path is very tiny. 
and they, they could uh, squeeze themselves into that. And uh, the foreigners, the white, uh, cannot get into that. Uh, and they get stuck in the path, in the opening. And they got killed. They got killed. So the Americans, of course, lost in the Vietnam War. The American soldiers died a lot there because even when you're strong and tall, you still lost over the tiny ones, the small and short ones. So that's why whether you're tall or short, they are all equal. So Chok and Cheche are actually the same. And this is great perfection dharma. In it, there are emptiness and existence. It is really superior. A uh, classmate in the morning was fine, but in the afternoon they have a, a maybe chicken pox or skin pox. And then so he took a break and to go to the doctor. And the doctor should say something that that's actually a skin allergy. Uh, on the second grade, I couldn't write the skin allergy. This is actually a play of word in Chinese. <laughs> So this is a play of words of Chinese. <laughs> so if it uh, connects, then that's fine. So in English, it's, it's going with the flow. In America, Grand Master English, I'm also a foreigner. I'm a foreigner in America. So the, the foreigners are native in America. So to them, oh, you cannot speak English? Of course, it's fine. That's acceptable. But uh, I can speak English too. And my English is quite good. So when you see, when you see them, you would say, <laughs> So he said, nice day, I said, beautiful day. Go to the gas station, buy the bus. I can go to the restaurant. I can hold it. I can hold it. I can uh, go anywhere. Uh, airport, uh, bus, uh, bus station, and uh, anywhere. I can drive the car. Uh, I can eat the food. I say something. Now I don't know. Now I don't know. Uh, the Americans understand my English. I don't have to be grammatically correct or say beautiful words. Like last time I said, I went to Alaska and I said, And the Americans say, no, no king crab. Why? 
because uh, Syria uh, another country uh, Syria uh, states so Alaska no kingdom See, my English is not bad, right? How come Alaska is Bonki Club country? Guxiang. Uh, uh, Alaska is. Uh, Alaska is Bonki Club uh, um, states. How come no uh, King Club? And then he explained, so he understood. So, just going with the flow, or you just connect them as if you understand it, so, uh, as if you master it really well. He said, how come? Actually, you don't understand it. If you see a foreigner in Taiwan, I would ask, where are you come from? And then they would reply, of Harvard University and MIT. Uh, you don't say Boston, it's Boston. <laughs> See, I can even correct the English pronunciation. Boston, 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 today. Boston, 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 today. So, Boston is not right, but Boston. Boston, that's right. Mm -hmm. And in Boston, there's really good lobsters. Yeah, very tasty lobsters. Do you live in Taichung? Mm. <laughs> and she asked, how come? can speak English with them, and they understand. So this is called Ren Yin. So for sex skin allergy, you can say itchy skin, that's okay. Ren Yin is like flexible, performing with flexibility and control. A man is very uh, shy, and one day he embraces himself and finally brave himself to s to write something with uh, with the numbers. Uh, this is also play for Chinese.
一三一四乘以十，等于是一八三四零，一巴掌就把你闪死。这个也是任命的，这个也是任命。数日可以代表文字。So the numbers can represent words, and words can also represent the numbers. With the multiplication, addition, subtractions, and division, they all have its own meanings. They are also meaningful. So if you can comprehend the pure emptiness, and at the same time you also understand Ren Yun is going along with the flow, with mastery, this is enlightenment and this is great perfection dharma. Think about it, what is emptiness and what is existence? Then you would understand what is Chachi, what is the true Pure emptiness and pure renewal. So inside the emptiness there is appearance, and inside the appearance there is an emptiness. And it, this is the most important heart essence of the Great Perfection Dharma.